Before I continue and discuss the King and the Queen's Chamber, I'll recap on the information from parts 1, 2 and 3. Now those three videos were made in November of 2009, and since then, it's now January 2012, additional information have come to light. Now for me the simplest way of showing you how the pyramid was built is always going to be with a model. This model was made with modified Legos. Now what do I mean by modified Legos? Well Legos are manufactured with a characteristic rise at the front of the brick, so making a smooth ramp is impossible. Now I'll quickly run through the process of how I did that. To modify the Lego I purchased some car body filler. It's best to use filler with added fiberglass. Now make sure the Legos are clean and grease free. Wash them and rinse them if necessary. Connect the Legos in a line and spray them with a primer paint. This helps the body filler stick to the brick. Now spread the body filler in a thin line evenly over a thick plastic sheet and push the Lego bricks into it hard. Now this is important, make sure the surface under the plastic is hard also, smooth and flat. Now after about 15 minutes the filler should be sufficiently set for you to cut the Legos free and peel them from the plastic. Use a sharp craft knife to trim off the waste. Wait about 2 hours for the bricks to set hard and then snap them away from each other. Clean each brick as required and connect them back up. Give them a final sand with some uh, fine 800 grit paper. Spray on an undercoat and a couple of top coats, and that's it. Well, I went a bit overboard and modified the face and bricks too. I think it gives a better look. Anyway, back to this model. Here we have the jet standing in the corner. It rests on or in the rotating pivot. To prevent the pivot from moving, it rests in the square socket. The jet is held firm with the crook with the aid of these two guy ropes. These ropes prevent lateral movement. Now although not shown here, I do believe this corner section had a timber platform joining the two stages together. His awesomeness here could direct operation seeing both sides of the pyramid. To rotate the jet, we have two teams, one left, a standard set of Lego figures, and one right, My Celebrity 9, which include Harry Potter, Bob the Builder, the construction guy from the village people, a Jedi Knight, Harry Potter's friend, a Scottish Islander, Islander a Ninja, and what looks like a, like a guy from the Home Prime Flower adverts. Now if we look at the left team, they are shown walking away from the Jed, pulling on the cartouche ropes. Now remember this? Pulling on the wooden stick is more comfortable and it enables you to pull harder. The cartouche rope is attached to the loop of the ankh by means of a lark's head knot. The ankh loop gives you the opportunity of adding or subtracting men from the main pulling line. So both left and right teams walk away and rotate the jet. A tow rope is placed around the base of the jet which is attached to a load and hauled up the pyramid. The load is in turn bound by rope with two rockers in this special manner. Now to minimise friction the ramp would be oiled, presumably rendered from animal fat during the cooking process. As the load reaches the stage it encounters a small outcrop from the rising ramp. To lessen the effect of friction at this point, a flail is placed between the, between the ropes and the wall. Whether a guy hands him a flail just before he reaches this point, or he carries his own is unclear, but logistically the, the less equipment the guy has to bring, take up to the pyramid, the less he has to bring back down. Ok, so the loader rides safely on the first stage, job done. We now need to get the tow rope back down so it can be attached to the next load. Easy one would think, just throw it down the ramp. You must remember the ramp is oiled and contaminating the rope would be most undesirable. Oil contamination would cause the rope to slip around the base of the jet. So the rope would be thrown down the pyramid and land on the dry outer case and stones. Now the was sept is used to pick up, catch and pass the rope. Now for the rewind process. As we saw in part one, the centre spool is used for this. The power rope needs to be rewound onto the spools and obviously the less tension on the power rope during this process the better. As we can see here, if Harry Potter and his chums remove the tension, the ankh would just fall to the floor, as we've seen in part 1. If the power up is not L level, with it will tangle with the spool below, or even fall off the spool. To remedy this, Ninja and the guy from the home Brad Flower pull on a crank crossbar, and this holds the power up level, and without tension. Evidence that may help support the theory that stone ramps built the pyramid comes from the tomb of Rick Marie. 
His tomb, known as TT100, is one of the most interesting on the west bank of Luxor. Within the tomb, a variety of oil paintings deal with the many aspects of daily life. They are widely acclaimed as shedding more light on ancient Egyptian culture than any other source. One scene of a brick ramp is of particular interest. It's one of the best pieces of evidence that proves Egyptians used ramps during construction. I will apply an aspective interpretation to the ramp scene and conclude that this interpretation should be considered. I have divided the scene into three viewpoints, A, B and C. Now remember these viewpoints may have different aspects in the same picture plane. Egyptian artists established a baseline, in this case the distance between the, f the front of the ramp and its initial rise up the pyramid determine viewpoint A, the baseline width and height. Viewpoint B is the size of the side of the rising column. This interpretation is based on the assumption that the blocks were of sufficient size they, they eliminated vertical joints. Viewpoint C is the front view of the column with the vertical joints.